Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is going to look at the recent edits to Green Boot's Wikipedia page, which either proves time travel is possible, or one of the Wikipedia editors is a charlatan. As a background, in January, the Research Items video described the location of Green Boot's cave because it is relevant to the Mallory and Urban discussion since the ice axe location is so close to the cave. It is the cave itself that is a useful landmark and not the body that has long since gone missing. However, some YouTube videos say that bodies are used as landmarks on Everest, and despite the obvious problems of them being removed or simply covered with snow, this does not stop people from preening their moral superiority feathers. To be clear, bodies are not used as landmarks on Everest, and there is no need to do so. There are fixed ropes that tell people exactly where to go on the standard routes, and bodies get covered in snow, get moved, or eventually get removed. Even the location of Green Boots Cave in the Wikipedia page is wrong by over 100 meters, so it is not clear how someone could use that as a landmark. There are also several easy-to-identify rock features, such as the first and second steps on the north side and the Hillary Step and the South Summit on the south side that are used to judge your position while you climb. While climbers certainly do talk about the location of bodies, this is primarily to prepare people for what to see. It is very disturbing seeing the bodies, and knowing when one is coming up is useful just so you can mentally prepare. Some people are not disturbed by the bodies. For instance, Mark Sinnott reported he used them to lean on when he sat down. We collapse, sometimes using bodies as backrests. But as I'll discuss in the review of his book, The Third Pole, that was part of his post-truth work, and certainly using a body as furniture is different from using it as a landmark. As a brief overview, three members of the 2019 Nat Geo team engaged in some creative work after the expedition. Renan Ozturk made Ghost Above, which is a type of anti-documentary, sort of like Borat, just not as funny. Mark Sinnott wrote The Third Pole, which is a post-truth book. That is, it contains the truth if you read between the lines. Sort of like Lucian's A True Story, but not as funny. And Tom Pollard has engaged in social media where he interacts in a post-truth style. That is, everything he says is both true and false at the same time, and it is sort of like a puzzle you need to figure out. This is similar to Mephistopheles in the second part of Faust, just not as funny. Now, back to the Green Boots Wikipedia page. Apparently, a viewer picked up on my obvious derision for the misinformation spread on Wikipedia and decided to defend Wikipedia's honor by blatantly violating one of the key tenets of Wikipedia's own code, namely not to update based on original research. Now, the first editor seems to be a well-intentioned person, but rather than simply deleting the inf misinformation because it had come from a tweet, which is not a reliable source, the Wikipedia editor decided to contact the person who made the tweet to clarify the rather obvious issue that did not need any clarification, namely that the photo in the tweet was taken in 2005. As you can see, Jake Meyer confirms the photo was indeed taken in 2005, and subsequently an edit was made to Wikipedia, removing the reference to the 2015 sighting. When I posted the research items video, I was asked the perfectly legitimate question of why I don't simply fix these problems myself rather than pointing them out. And as we'll see by what happened next, you cannot fix Wikipedia. You can spend all your time researching and trying to get things correct, and anyone can come on and spread misinformation. There's such an asymmetry because honest researchers do not have the time nor inclination to monitor every edit for misinformation, while fools, charlatans, and shills have plenty of time on their hands. It is also far easier to create misinformation than actual information. In addition, fixing it would be of little service. It is more useful to learn to spot misinformation so that you're not taken in by charlatans. Now, I myself have believed some of this misinformation in the past. It is not always easy to spot, and I find these videos are helpful to others who are also learning to navigate an online world full of charlatans, which I will sometimes refer to as the demon-haunted world, referring to Carl Sagan's book of the same name. Just two weeks after the Wikipedia article was edited to remove the bogus references, someone added a different bogus reference, this time to a supposed 2017 sighting. The following is how the article reads today. In May 2014, Green Boots' body was reported to be missing from view, presumably removed or buried. However, in 2017, it became visible again with more rocks surrounding the body. And it cites a 2015 article from BBC Future for the alleged fact that the body was visible in 2017. Has the BBC discovered a time travel device that lets them write articles two years before the events take place? Unfortunately, no. The name BBC Future does not refer to a time travel mechanism. It is just the naming for a section of the BBC that claims to believe in 
truth, facts, and science. Noting, we take time to think, we don't accept, we ask why. Nothing wrong with that. It is a frequent theme on this channel. In reading the BBC article, it should come as no surprise that nowhere does an article written in 2015 reference the body reappearing in 2017. Instead, the article clearly says the body was missing in 2014. As the body was there when I passed in 2013, late in the season, it appears to have been removed in 2014. Mark Sinnott noted it was moved in 2014 in his book, The Third Pole, in this still frame from The Ghost Above, the film by Renan Ozturk about the Nat Geo 2019 expedition, shows what appears to be an empty cave. However, was the body simply pushed into the corner and covered with rocks? Doesn't look like it, but you can see for yourself. I'll link to the full video in the description, and not only is it useful to look at the cave, but because the cave is so close to the ice axe location, and Ozturk does have a brief panning shot, you can get an idea of the terrain around that location. I find that the more you are familiar with the terrain on Mount Everest, the more the so-called mysteries disappear. However, all this talk of time travel does allow me to introduce a scene from my favorite time travel movie, 12 Monkeys. Here, Jeffrey Goines, played by Brad Pitt, gives a cogent criticism of modern society to James Cole, a time traveler played by Bruce Willis. Of course, there is some irony in this scene, as the doctor to which Goines refers, Semmelweis, died in an insane asylum, with few of the so-called scientists at the time accepting the idea that doctors washing their hands could be beneficial. I was going to use this clip in the upcoming review of Into the Silence because it highlights some of the abuses of so-called science that Wade Davis talks about in that book and his subsequent lectures. But I'll introduce it here because the tone of the Into the Silence review is more serious and this video is more lighthearted. Do you know what crazy is? Crazy is majority rules. Yeah, uh. Take germs, for example. Germs? Uh-huh. In the 18th century, no such thing. Not a nothing. No one ever imagined such a thing. No sane person anyway. Ah, ah. Along comes this doctor. Ah, ah, ah. Semmelweis. Semmelweis. Semmelweis comes along. He's trying to convince people, well, other doctors mainly, that there are these teeny tiny invisible bad things called germs that get into your body and make you sick. Huh? He's trying to get doctors to wash their hands. What is this guy? Crazy? Huh? Teeny tiny invisible, what do you call him? Uh, uh, germs, huh? What? Now, cut to the 20th century, huh? Last week, as a matter of fact, right before I got dragged into this hellhole. I go in, I order a burger in this fast food joint. The guy, he drops it on the floor. Jim, he picks it up, he wipes it off, he hands it to me like it was all okay. What about the germs, I say? He says, I don't believe in germs. Germs are just a plot they made up so they can sell you disinfectants and soaps. Now, he's crazy, right? See? I... There's no right, there's no wrong, there's only popular opinion. A recent article on PBS about Semmelweis says, in 1861, he finally published his work, The Etiology, the Concept, and the Prophylaxis of Childbed Fever, in which he explained his theories on childbed fever, the ways to avoid spreading it by means of vigorous hand washing, and an attack on every one of his critics with a vitriol that still leaps off the page. Apparently, this vitriol was that he called medical students who did not wash their hands fools. This is sort of an inside joke that subscribers will understand. One of the projects I am working on for after the Mallory and Irvin videos is a series on the trial of Galileo. And similar to Mallory and Irvin, much of the conventional wisdom is either not true or only true from a certain point of view. For instance, it was not the church that wished to silence Galileo. It was his so-called scientific colleagues, and Tycho Brahe in particular, that used the church to silence him to protect their own rather lucrative government contracts. And I see an equally bizarre situation with Mallory and Irvin, where the main organization that refuses to discuss summit rocks and their potential use in resolving the so-called mystery is National Geographic itself. Their museum exhibit had a section on using glacier rocks to measure the rate at which glaciers were melting, but curiously, nothing about rocks from the summit. It appears some science is more equal than others. <laughs> 